Hey there, welcome to My Green Pets. I'm William Green. Still a few things for sale. A lot of stuff has sold. Thank you guys so much for those of you who have purchased some stuff. I will ship it out as soon as we get a warm window. I need at least three warm days and nights in a row before I feel comfortable shipping stuff. Hope you understand. Um, let's have a look and see what's still left. So this is Bulbophyllum catenulatum. I've got a lot of it. And uh, I've got some more over here in a little container. But um, I am asking, I think, like 15 only $15 or so for a division of this stuff. And uh, it has very cute little flowers that can bloom any time of year. Another plant I'd like to sell is this Bulbophyllum rufinum. Uh, this is a bulbo that can withstand a dry season. It's got big fat bulbs that uh, in its native habitat It's dry for a few months in the winter. It's got two new growths pushing out and I'm asking 25 for that This little guy is a Catlia genmanii Alba. It's from H&R. It's a seedling. I'm asking 15 Back here. We've got a Catlia Mossii uh, this has got awarded parents, and I am asking 50 for that. Looks like it is one growth away from blooming. Looks really nice, lots of roots. Uh, let's see, this Catlia labiata is a huge plant. These are all the, this is the tree any next to it, but this and this and this and this is all that labiata, and it just bloomed with some really nice flowers back in December. That also has awarded parents, and I'm asking 75. That one's from uh, Steve Christofferson. Let's see, over here we've got this little Signoches Alexis Jesus Pardo by Dark Swan. Has kind of speckly flowers. This is from SVO's offering last fall. I'm asking 30 for that, since we know what the flowers look like. And uh, Dienia ofridis. Well, let's look here. This is a Shern Orchis. It has tiny little flowers that can bloom throughout the year. Kind of an unusual little thing. I'm asking 20 for that. And then down here we've got Dienia ofridis. It goes dormant in the winter, but you can see the new growths are pushing. And this is a, ter a terrestrial, so you can grow it in uh, kind of a bark moss mixture. Never let it dry out, except. In November, it drops all its leaves, kind of like a catacetum, and it has kind of cattail, purple cattail colored blooms. So, interested in any of those, let me know. Oh, and of course, Nina and Unu, this massive Catlia rex, uh, two Catlia rexes uh, all together. I, I'm not quite sure how to transport this thing, but uh, this thing is for sale as well. Um, all those prices are definitely not fixed. If you'd really like something, please shoot me an email and we can work it out. My top priority is just getting some space in here as some things get larger. For example, my pride and joy that I haven't given, been given a whole lot of attention to recently is this whole little bunch of Catlia Rexes from Peru. I'm not super thrilled with the patchiness on the leaves. But some of them, as you can see, are really graduating to that next stage of growth where they're starting to get big. Um, so I want to get them potted up so that they'll be happier and get them more at the forefront of the collection. Uh, they've been kind of neglected for about a year. Um, on the one hand, it's good because I'm trying to breed stronger plants. so. If a plant doesn't survive a little bit of neglect, for example, this one doesn't look so hot, um, I don't want to breed with it. I want to breed with things that can survive my my level of care, which, you know, I feel like is a step on the right in the right direction towards being easier to grow. But I'm really encouraged about the, the thickness and the size of this guy here. It's that purple in the back of the leaf there. We've got a Catlia Dawiana over here. Rosita. Popping up here. Nice new growth. 
Um, Hal actually got divided last week, and that went very, very smoothly, really easy. A uh, very clear place to slice between these two pieces. This back bulb will be traveling to its new owner as soon as the weather improves. And uh, it's got a new, this uh, this is a new growth that just grew. Well, it's the most recent new growth, and it's got some good roots on it too. So I think it's going to be okay. I haven't seen any bulb shriveling, even though it's been divided for a week. So that's good. And then this is the piece that I'm keeping. And you can see down here. Now, flower spike is still going, so that's super good news. I hope it will continue. You can also see here that uh, I got in the mail on Wednesday some, what is it, Neu, Neoceulus californicus predatory mites. And I, um, these are from Arbico Organics and, uh, uh, I, they, re they recommend that you release them at night, so I got in here and you can see there's like little sprinkles of vermiculite all over everything because the the vial is full of vermiculite plus all the little the little mites in there. And so um, you have to you should leave the container as well because a lot of the mites will crawl all over the container and then out the container. Anyway, there were you know there's supposed to be two thousand of them. There were definitely hundreds and hundreds of them all over the container. I left it in this plant for a while. I left it over there on Rebecca Northern Mikabi for a while because I noticed that the new growth, even the, the tiny little new growth here, looks like it's been eaten up. So I don't even know if that new growth is going to make it, if it's going to have to try to push a new one. But I let this, I, leave, I left the cap of the mite, the predator mite container right here and it was just crawling with them. So I'm hoping any little spider mites that were along this stem are hiding out and their eggs and everything have been eaten. I really, really hope so. Definitely saw some crawling on there. Uh, some, I think I saw some spider mites here and uh, on this stem. And you can see back here there's actually a pod. I really hope that that continues because it's got some pretty decent parents, and that would be a really nice Rebecca Northern Grex of seedlings that come out of there. A lot of things are breaking new growth. This is my Calia hardiana. You can see some nice new roots pushing. You can also see a new growth breaking there. I'm hoping that this little growth will break a new eye as well and start growing. Lots of new roots on Catlia Dawiana rosita. Some new growth on my Dawiana aurea and its sibling here. Although the leaves did come up kind of weird. But anyway. And yeah, so I'm really hoping that uh, the predatory mites plus the increase in humidity in the tent is going to take care of any mite issues that I had before. Uh, they seem to be, everything does seem to be quite a bit better now. So that's good. I'm watching especially these Nepenthes. These were the ones that had, you can see some still some yellowing on that bottom leaf and down here, but I did a lot of damage to just spraying strong detergent solution on them. So learned I should not do that. But here's a new growth on Eustachia. And you can see the our new leaf. And I'm hoping that we'll see pictures developing on that new leaf. That would be great. Although, actually, nope, doesn't look like that's going to happen. Maybe that one back there. So Eustache is still getting established. Got some of this, looks like this blue-green algae or something all over that. Really don't like that at all. Uh, we've got the Raja by Velosa seedlings really growing quickly. Look at this one. It's got two pitchers already, and it's pushing out a third. That's great. They were just planted in October, and they sprouted in mid-November. So that's pretty good for these slow-growing little guys. They're not that slow. And, yeah. Just lots of growth happening, and... Uh, Looking forward to shipping off the plants that have sold and the, hopefully the plants that will sell and then being able to reorganize in here 
and definitely repot some of these little rexes that have been in the same pots for a couple years and need to they need some attention. Um, and then of course the catacetinae are all rare and to go. We've got uh, Signoche's Cooper over here, another one here, pushing new growth. We got Rebecca Northern Grapefruit Pink back here, pushing new growth. We got a couple new growths on this Rebecca Northern. And um, Signoche's Varsavicii as well. I don't know if you can see back here. There's a little green growth at the bottom there pushing. So, uh, and then back here we've got Fire Embers also with a new growth. I don't know if you can see it. And then Bronze Vixen just bloomed. So I think it'll be a minute before it starts pushing out a new growth, but that will probably happen soon as well. So my uh, bulbophyllum back here looks a lot happier, a lot plumper um, bulbs now that I draped some sphagnum moss all around those roots. So that's good. Bulbophyllum medusae. My Alba clone is crawling out of its pot again, so I'm hoping before I have to divide it again, we will get a really nice bloom off of it because it only put out one, I think one or two last year, that was it. And, uh, yeah. The little Phalaenopsis that I decapitated back a few months ago has got... You can see the chop, where I chopped it there in the middle. And then it's got new basal growths on either side. And they're starting to root and look good. And that's exciting. I can't wait to see that bloom. That's a Philanopsis Surf Song. It's got orange flowers. Kind of had my eye on that one for a long, long, long time. And then back here, I don't want to go back here. This little Philanopsis, this is one that was at my mom's house that I took her. And... uh wasn't doing so well, so I brought it back to nurse it back to health. It wasn't in terrible shape, but it needed a little bit of tender, loving care. So yeah, exciting things. It's springtime. Things are things are going. Things are moving. Um, looks like one of my little pinguicula. This one I think is called Ellersii. It looks like it's got a little flower bud pushing. That's what it looks like to me. And then, yeah, they're just doing a lot better job of catching fungus gnats now that I have the the fan off for long. For uh, The fan is currently set to two hours off, half hour on, all day. And it seems to be doing okay. The humidity is a lot better in here. Today, our humidity around uh, the Denver area is like less than 10%. It's super dry, super dry. Just opening up the tent for a few minutes, it's already down to 36 in here. So uh, no worries about things staying too wet or moldy. Just have to keep an eye on things and make sure they're getting watered enough, but not too much. There's a lot of plants in here that do not want to be watered very much. Got my little Vanda Salcata Haksan back here. Looks like it's pushing new roots. Got a new little growth in the front. Very exciting. Hope to have a nice bloom on that. Last year it bloomed super early. It bloomed back. It bloomed in April. It's supposed to bloom in July, but the grow tent kind of accelerates things a little bit. Everything's about two months ahead in the grow tent. Um, but that goes all year round. It's just like the kind of the year is adjusted to two months ahead. Uh, my purpurata, Catlia purpurata, and pulcherima next door to each other both putting out new growth at the same time and this new growth looks like a promising nice new size there i don't expect flower buds or anything but i definitely think that after this one we might get we might be only one or two away and then those of course look they need they, they need to be repotted they're crawling out as well this one i'm really excited about this is a labiata um semi-alba from carter and holmes uh, it's a cell thing, so I really expect it to be a pure labiata and give us some flowers when it gets big enough. Probably not this year, maybe next year. So yeah, Calia Maxima Cerulea. This division has sold. It's got just finishing up a new growth. 
I'm going to unpot it. I'm going to send all my plants that I can bare root because that's just much lighter. And uh, if I were to send it in, they're potted in rocks. And if those rocks get loose, they'll just damage everything and make the package very heavy. So we're shipping them bare root. I'm keeping my own little division of the Maximus Cerulea over here. Hopefully we'll get some blooms on that in a year or two. So yeah, that's kind of where we are. All kinds of little things going on. And uh, hope that any little pest issue that we had earlier is going to be completely eradicated. Um, and we are ready for summer. We're ready for a nice long growing season. From We could say the official start of growing season is around February for a lot of these plants. And doesn't really end until October. So... Oh, one last thing, we've got Catlia Rex, Nina, and Uno. Here's the furthest along new growth. And we can expect that to bloom once it gets fully stretched out. So that's going to be nice. There's several new growths on this plant. At least five that I can see. Well, it's two plants. Okay. All right, well, we're 16 minutes. That's pretty long for an update, so I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, check out the website if you haven't yet. Love to hear what you think about it, mygreenpets.org, O-R-G. And we'll see you next time. Have a great week. I'm William Green. Bye.